Listen, a lot of people unhappy with this omnibus bill. But some real, some real conservatives are happy with the bill. We Democrats are really happy oh, wait a with what we were able to accomplish on a number of priorities that Democrats have fought for all along. Infrastructure, education, opioid relief, and more. This is a bill that puts the middle class and those struggling to get there first. <laughs> well, not everyone's unhappy with it, right? Let's welcome Ann Coulter. Ann! <laughs> that was great, Tom. Thank you for that. I needed something to perk up the end of my country. <laughs> <laughs> but, Ann, wait a minute. Let's go through this thing here. I've been looking at your tweets. I think you called him President Schumer. You talked about you're, all of a sudden you're going to join Mueller's team. It can't be that bad. I can't imagine how it could be any worse. Um, there's zero funding for the wall, and in fact, he is prevented from putting up even one little inch of one of those prototypes. No, all he can do is build a little pedestrian fence. Nothing that he has been looking at. None of the prototypes totally banned. Wait a minute. He said it's going to start. I'm, he said, I'm not happy with, with the $1.6 billion, uh, but it does start the wall, and we'll make that $1.6 billion go very far. Now, but what do you mean? It, it, he's restricted... No, the actually prohibits him from using any of the prototypes. It's just, it, it states what kind of, quote, barrier can be used, i.e., one that we're absolutely sure Mexicans can get across. Well, who wrote this? Who wrote that part of it? Chuck Schumer and Nancy Pelosi wrote the whole bill. Schumer got $60 billion, billion for a tunnel in his state. But for the country, for the central promise that put Donald Trump in the White House, he only gets $1.6 billion and very strict restrictions on what it can be used on. He can repaint some fences. There's a fence down by the San Diego border, and they're allowed to repaint that. Um, no new border agents. Um, but there are at least capable of doing anything we want border agents to do. But there will be about another hundred bureaucrats within the Homeland Security Department. And, oh, my gosh, Republicans have got to get over this military spending thing. It is not the 1980s anymore. The military is a gigantic welfare program. I've avoided saying that until now when this entire monstrosity is justified as more military spending than ever. Okay, replace that with, you know, welfare. More welfare spending. All they're doing is inducting transgenders and hiring diversity counselors. It is the most wasteful department in the, in, in the history of government because no Republican will vote against anything if you say, oh, it's for defense. It's for defense. It will be for transgender operations, but don't you worry. It's part of the Defense Department bill. Well, wait a minute. I'm looking at some numbers here. 14 Navy ships. That's $23 billion for ships, $10 billion for fighter jets. So there are, I mean, it's, it, they, they got some uh, equipment in here. Do you think we should build the ships? Probably not. We have a lot of ships. We're doing, this is corporate welfare and human welfare. Let's see here. We will have... any Republican, let me ask you this, is, is there anyone who will say no? Well, uh... This is how we got AIDS, Tom. No <laughs> one to say no. <laughs> Look, Ann, wait a minute here. Let's, let's go back to... Uh, my main question that I started the show with, and I really don't understand. Is there anyone opposing Trump's impeachment anymore? <laughs> no, there are a few cro magnans. Oh, yeah, we saw him on The Apprentice. He's playing 3D chess. Um, you don't yeah, buy the 3D really chess. Helping. You don't buy Count there's something that. bigger Count in this. Count on that, Mr. President. Luckily for him, the Senate math, perhaps unluckily for the country, I don't think it really makes a difference one way or another, um, but... Uh, he, he, he'll be impeached, but not removed, because the Senate math, the Senate will stay in Republican hands for at least until the 2020 election, when not only will Mitch McConnell's Republicans be wiped out in the Senate, but we will be losing the presidency. Um, well, but, what about that? What about that idea that basically say that the, the scenario comes true, that uh, the Republicans lose a lot of seats and then it's a Democrat majority in both the House and the Senate? No, it won't be in the Senate. That's what I'm saying. Okay, there aren't that be. many seats up. 
Uh Um, Republicans have no vulnerable seats up, basically. We can't, we are incapable by the Senate math of losing the Senate. So the second, I mean, the House, it's called the People's House for a reason. Um, uh, Every one of them is up every two years, whereas only a third of the Senate is up this year. And just by luck of the draw, it's a great year for the Republicans. A bunch of vulnerable Democrats are up. Mm -hmm. They, of course, will win re-election. So instead of picking up seats as we ought to, this is one of these historic elections where you have, Democrats running in states that Trump won by 20 points, like Montana and North Dakota. No worries for the Democrats now. So, so he no, is. No, they're going to hold those seats. Oh, McCaskill. McCaskill in Missouri. She has had the luck of the draw every six years. It's unbelievable. She got Aiken last time. It's crazy that she is representing a nice state like Missouri. She will be reelected. The House will, will definitely flip. Why would anyone vote Republican? Well, Why so would they lose. anyone vote Vote Republican, and please let me remind you that I am the one who is always going on Fox News and haranguing these purest Republicans, saying, "Please, please, please! No matter how much you hate your Republican, just this one last time, vote Republican. We need a Republican Senate. We need a Republican House." There's no point, Tom. <laughs> well, what if he? So they lose, right? They lose the House, okay? But and they don't lose the Senate. And he's impeached the next day. Okay, so he's impeached. Actually, they'll drag it out for fun because they all want to go on MSNBC. It'll probably take like a month of here. It'll be nonsense. Yeah. And then so he gets matter, impeached. They have a majority. They're impeaching him. Right. So they impeach him, but then they can't remove him. Then he has a he's fighting against a house that, uh, you know, it's a it's a house. It's a house divided. And they the not exactly. They seem to all agree. They want open borders, cheap labor for the Koch brothers, voters for the Democrats. I think we'll all be, you know, in happy unison for the end of America. Well, couldn't that couldn't that assist his reelection prospects? You know, reelection was very uh, it was we when Bill Clinton was first president, he was quite unpopular. Newt Gingrich came in. The Republicans had a wonderful victory in uh, in I think both the House and the Senate, if I'm right there. And he was impeached, but he sailed to reelection victory. Could the same thing happen for President Trump? Well, you never know what's going to happen. That doesn't seem like the most likely scenario to me. The most likely scenario is we're, we're in a country that is almost hegemonically controlled by the Democrats due to the last 50 years of immigration. Um, California, the state that gave us Reagan and Nixon, cannot elect any Republican statewide anymore. Not a chance. They're all dropping out. We, there are barely any Republicans in the congressional delegation. That's one state. We found out with... Um, you got to thing? move to the center. You got That's to move to the center. <laughs> Um, no, you have to move to America, and that apparently is, is no longer California. It's not. With Ed Gillespie, we found out the same has happened in Virginia. We've known it's happened, you know, state after state keeps falling. Um, because of demographics, because of a specific design by the Democrats, they couldn't get Americans to vote for them, so they brought in ringers. Um, it's been I would, called listen, Teddy what, Kennedy's Revenge, the it, 1965 Immigration Act. It I worked. think, yes, and what you're saying is correct. And in certain parts of the country, it's overwhelming, uh, you know, like California, like New York, like these liberal states. But the, pre- I mean, for when you're talking about 2020, the exactly president, he's the still, point I'm getting to. he's so, still quite popular in p- places that he won last time, like Ohio, yes, Pennsylvania, so people, and Michigan. What were they, what did they love about him? Do you remember if there was any one thing that came up at every single rally, every single day? Building something. I forget what it was. Build that. Yeah, yeah. He totally betrayed them, and yes, there is a segment of Cro-Magnon and right-wingers. They just, he's playing 3D chess, Tom. Yep, he gives away the store. He's not ever going to build a wall. He's going to amnesty illegals. But don't you worry, Tom, it's 3D chess. Okay, those people should be drowned, except you couldn't even lead them to a bath because they don't know what water is. Wait a minute, Anne. They are so stupid, there is no hope. He will still have those voters. He won by the skin of his teeth by making promises no Republican would ever make before. He has betrayed every single one of them. And now we've hired John Bolton, so soon we'll be going to war with North Korea, Russia, Iran, and Syria. Hmm, who was the guy who called Iraq a huge mistake? And now he's hired one of the principal architects of Iraq to advise him? Oh, good grief, there is no hope any place in sight. You know, I talked to Ambassador Bolton last night. He said he's going to do what the president wants, not the other way around. You don't think well, that... The president's 
going to do what Jared wants. So check in with Jared. I want to, Anne. Let's get. Let's take Bruce in Jersey City. He thinks the president is playing three D chess. Yes, Bruce. Why? Where? Can you find out okay. where he lives so I can go there and hold his head under the water <laughs> until the bubble stops. Bruce, this April, crap has Anne, got to I stop. Say, Anne, I have to tell you, I'm so on board with everything you do. We, I actually, we grew up next to each other. You were our crosstown rival. I was from Darien, and but I'm in Jersey City now. And um, it's addled your to... brain if you think this is 3D chess. <laughs> no, I'm telling you though, if you, you're I'm a nice Fairfield County a, type, and no, I consider, I went a yo-yo today. I was so down. Then I was up with the veto, so excited. Then all of a sudden, when he passed it, I was down again. Now I'm calm. He does, you know, if you have a strong military, and I'm thinking this is aimed at North Korea. You get the crazy bolt, and you get the force, and if he gets. They taunt and moving forward with containing North Korea's nukes. That's huge. No, so and I remember how they look- chanted that at the rallies? Because that is so going to bring jobs back to the industrial No, but Midwest. I think, though, you, the thing North that you Korea don't... North Korea is thing not that- America's problem. North Korea is China's, China's problem. I hear Why you, doesn't China you- say, as Trump has of North Korea, and if America won't deal with Mexico, we will. North Korea, but, not I, our problem. Let me just tell you, though, here in Jersey City, I, in the subways, the, the cheap sandwich shops, the people are happy with their paychecks. Taxes are down this time. Yes, this omnibus is a nightmare, but taxes are down and re- re- deregulation is down, and so their economy hopefully will be stimulated. I'm telling you, the, they're cracked in their, st- their base. I, I see a lot of... Um, you know, uh, Latinos and black communities moving towards Trump purely for his economics. So I think oh, yeah, be- that totally carried the day in the Pennsylvania 18th district. <laughs> Bruce, they thank you for the call, there. Bruce. <laughs> Look, and tax cuts have been fantastic in the... You know what, what the Democrat, that what's his name, Connor Lamb, in the 18th district that we just humiliatingly lost? Hmm. A district of the Trump won by 20 points, and the Republican can't carry it in a special election? Why not? What did the Democrat run on? Was it, oh, um, 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 we're going to war, don't go to war with North Korea. No, the Democrat ran against Paul Ryan Republicanism. He opposed Bush, or, um, he didn't, it's the same as Bush, he may as well be, Jeb. Yeah. Um, he opposed Trump's tax cuts, this Connor Lamb, the Democrat, who just won. Yeah. He opposed entitlement reform, another Paul Ryan specialty. He was wide open on immigration. Did the Republican mention immigration? No, he did not. I'm glad you asked me that. No, Paul Ryan Republicanism, big loser. And that's what Trump's doing. And and yeah, okay, you can be a little cheerleader for Paul Ryan. Yeah, maybe Romney will win too. <laughs> well, look, I think that Connor Lamb, I think basically he was a military guy. He had his gun in the ads. He looked like a, uh, you know, a c- kind of a solid guy. And that other guy was a bad candidate. So I don't know what we can... You can come yourself with yeah. these little fairy tales, but the facts are Connor Lamb did not run as a Trump Republican. He ran against Trump's tax cuts, and he won in a district Trump carried by 20 points. Nobody, nobody that, who, whom Trump brought out to vote for him who haven't voted in 30 years, they don't care about tax cuts because they're not paying taxes. They wanted jobs. They wanted no more heroin in their communities. They don't want their schools being overwhelmed with with unaccompanied minors and, uh, you know, Somali refugees. That's what they voted for, and they have been betrayed over and over and over again. And when the Republicans get wiped in the House, I'm going to laugh and laugh and laugh. And, but I'm glad I don't have children. I'm sorry for you, Tom, because this is it. This is it. In one generation, this country is going to be South Africa. We had this one chance to save it, and we were betrayed. And I love getting your, your viewpoint. This is going to give my callers a lot to chew on. If anybody else thinks he's playing 3D chess, I want to hear from you. And get the addresses so I can go drown them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and how was your speech at the campus the other day? It was fantastic. Yeah. And I'll be at Columbia University debating um, Mickey Kaus on immigration next Tuesday. Fantastic. Ann Coulter, I want to see you sometime. Next time you're in New York, please come in the studio. I'd love to. Good to talk to you, Tom. You too. Ann Coulter.